Okay. Okay. You ready? No. Doesn't matter. Welcome to Precap UFC Atlantic City. I don't know what number this is for fight nights, but uh, yeah, Dave and I just came over from Johnny K Picks and Cody Blood Money at Blood MMA. What is it? Blood Money. MMA bets. <laughs> Cody from Blood Money MMA bets and Johnny K picks. Awesome fucking guys. Check yep. out their stream. We just did. A, we just finished a live stream off with them. Uh, two or two and some odd hours, recapping every single fight that we just had. Uh, the four of us going over stats and everything like that. Um, very impressive. Yeah. Now we're now back. we're gonna do it again our way. Our way with the visuals, with the visuals. Visual so bad to be like Dave, pull up the face off. Dave, pull up this motherfucker. You know what? Dave, pull up. By the way, Dave, for the last two hours, I really appreciate not having to produce. Still, stop. For the last two hours, I really appreciate not having to produce any show whatsoever. Not having to bring up the stats. Not having to bring up the face off. Not having, being pretty much of a lazy just commentator guest which is freaking awesome which i see what ranj does on a regular month or weekly basis where he just does everything he just kind of hangs out and cashes in Whatever. and does all the freaking work i get it now it was I very nice know. i gotta do some work too you know that but, come on but you know what nah like start this, is why, this is why our show brings in everything let's go let's bring this show off the face off win instagram everything all right, let's do it. Are you ready? Let's get into it. No, just did this, this time, this time it's for real. You ready? I just got to crack the new beer. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Cheers. Cheers. Even though you you better slow down. You broke out the whiskey trying to be fancy in front of those guys. It's the. All right, All right Crystal, already in the chat. Where you you guys are late? You sure are, but you were in there, Crystal. Don't play. Um, giving out fake picks and other pad. Appreciate the line movement. <laughs> okay, don't take serious newcomers. And here's a new cover, Evan Ice Viking. I didn't, I didn't fake, I didn't just slide by you. How you doing, Evan? Just came from them and followed you both guys. Awesome, thank you. Now we're gonna show you how it's really done, right, Dave? With all twenty of us in here. <laughs> okay, the curtain jerker for the prelims. We have. Nate the train. Is this wrong? This is wrong. Wrong order, right? What's Stop right here, bitch. Stop right here. Okay. Well, let me pull up my topology. Okay. Angel Pacheco versus Colin Lofgren. Now, this one, so Angel great. Pacheco, sick volume. If you look at his contender series fight against Danny Silva, how, how many he punches he had like 190 something strikes in that fight fantastic i don't think colin lofgren's ever done that even oh look at who showed up let's Real go picks. what'd you find your laptop let's go fellas huh all right, all right. anyway yeah we're right. perfect time we just started the start of the show so um and when i was over uh looking over this fight i'm like man this kid both of these guys are really unproven they haven't they have zero wins in the UFC, right? I, does Colin Lofgren have a win in the UFC? He might have one. I don't think so. I think he's 0-1, right? He had that short notice. Lost to Taylor. Short notice fight. Yeah. And, uh, Angel Pacheco. Looked, he looked great in the loss against Danny Silva. That's what I'm saying. And he's a huge underdog, plus two, some, 280 something, I think. But um, this one's hard to pick because both these guys are unproven. However, I'm going to lean the plus money on this one because of the volume of Angel Pacheco, which has been proven. Colin Lofgren, I mean, I know he's he's got – yeah, this is his first his, – he lost his first fight in the UFC, Taylor Lapolis. That's that uh, – the veteran – I think he's a French fighter, if I'm correct. And he lost overseas in – I think was a Paris card, maybe. Can't remember. But anyway, he's a huge favorite here. He shouldn't be. Not, not at minus 375. That makes me sick. So 
I'm going to go out on an island. I don't care if I'm by myself. I'm taking the volume of Andrew Pacheco, and he has got that tough chin. He he will take a he'll eat fist all day, but he'll he'll also answer back. And I think uh, and you know earlier when I was breaking this down, I was like, oh, Lofgren probably uh got is better on the ground. But now I'm looking at Andrew Pacheco's got a bunch of submissions in his uh, resume. Let's pull it up, Dave. Pull up his uh. Angel Pacheco's cards, his uh, former fights, please. All right, let me let me go a little bit of rant here. Seven and two. Let's see if he's faced bums. Let me go on, me go on, on a rant here. Give me okay. give me a chance. Here. All right, his last loss against Daniel Silva. All right, seven one, decent guy. Before that, Wilson Negrone was five and two. Okay, this guy sucks. I know. Before that. Nine and fourteen, Jack Schroeder. Wonderful. Nine and fourteen. Oh, no. You know what? Why nine don't you fight him again? A nine and thirteen guy, Jack Schroeder. Fight him twice. Before that, hey, you know he what? Fight twelve and eight guy who fucking sucks that you're gonna fucking choke out. Then before that, you're gonna fight a ten and six guy and lose to him. Before that, one and oh, two one and oh, oh one and oh. Can you pad this record a little bit more? Because besides the wins against yeah. Jack Schroeder and a Wilson who is this guy? Who is now okay. eight and three? Do the All same right. thing for uh, your Irish fella there because uh, he's got a little bit padding on his shit too. Oh, oh, and oh. Hassan Abizad. Okay. Bakir or Kyle. One and oh. Fucking short-sighted Asian eyed Korean motherfucker. Listen. His beginning of the career. You're gonna bring you're you're gonna start every career with your fucking padded stats. Yeah, I get it. But then once you get to four and oh, you're gonna fight a guy who is one and oh, I get it. Then a guy who's five and oh, ten and three. And then nine and zero, and then eighteen and three, which is way better than the negative fucking fighting ratio of and hell per heckle, who I have nothing, no way in hell, all day long. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. I'm glad we differ. I know I don't blame you. That neither the bookies, neither the, the tapology, everybody's on this Irish guy. I just I'm not sold on him. That's all I'm saying. I'm not sold on him. I'm going to take my stab at the nice plus money underdog. No reason not yeah. to, except for he's got some bums on his thing. But so so does, uh, I mean, not as many bums, but still, they both have bums on their because They do. Now, is this a minus 400 and plus 300 fight? <laughs> That's why I'm taking Angel Pacheco right there. Plus money, bitch. So, yeah. This is a even it's... fight, maybe minus 125 to plus 100, maybe. Uh, minus 400 is embarrassing. If anybody picks this kid at minus 400, I will disown you as a fan. You will be unsubscribed. You, I don't even want – yeah, no. Dave, stop watching. All right. all right. Well, let's see what Real Fight Picks has to say. I'm going to go with Kalen. I remember watching this. So this was the France, the France card that he lost to Taylor Lapalus on. We also hit on that day, um, and uh, he kind of impressed me. I was a little bit, a um, little worried at first, uh, but he stood there. He was tough. I'm gonna okay. give him the edge of strength of schedule, like you guys say. It's not the odds are kind of screwed up. He shouldn't be a minus 400 favorite. Range very smart for going with the dog on this one. And uh, yeah, I don't blame you for that. But if we're trying, I, I want to be perfect. I want to be perfect. I want to get every single fight right. And if I want to get every single fight right, I'm gonna go with Kalen. That's my. Look at how smart he is with the glasses, Angel Pacheco. Did you see him take the glasses off? He's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's not and the kind you know, of IQ. You're my my holler had girls back too. Let Ooh, you know. Thank God. That's like she losing back. and then finding it. Even though I like I like the new one, but look, there she is. Yeah. There she is with, with my favorite holler head t-shirt. Bigger camera now. She's not using her phone. She upgraded. Her camera's thick. But look at look at the size. Angel Pacheco's got a little bit of height. Take off that hat. He's got a little bit more height. 
That's true, doesn't he? He looks like a big guy. Yeah, he's, he's slouching and he's still taller. What's t- what topology say on the heights? 68 versus 70 inches. Sorry, wait, sorry, height? 5'6 versus 5'8. You, know, you know why? Because it's going to go to decision. It's going to go to decision, and the judges are going to see Angel Pacheco with the massive volume over the Colin Lofkin. Okay, I could see that. The one thing I don't like is that on the island to take Angel by decision. The one thing I don't like is that I mean, the obvious path to victory for for, here for uh, the short Irishman is going to be taking this guy down, and the judges have not been generous to take to to take downs without kind of damage. I think so. I don't like it. Well, no, 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 no. There is no sub happening here. Uh, the Irish guy is going to take him down. He's going to beat him up. He's going to volume. He's going to be. It's going to be a takedown. I think it's no brainer. So. You got to remember, Lofgren's out of Liverpool. British, the British don't. They don't wrestle well. He's out of Liverpool. They don't even send a, a wrestler to the Olympics. England doesn't. England does not. Neither does Ireland. They don't send a wrestler to the Olympics. You know who does? The U.S. And where's Angel? Yeah, yeah from he's from Minnesota. Great wrestling state. Yep. That's I don't think you realize how much Pajajo sucks on the ground Pacheco. and on the feet. All right. Moving on. We got we to be kind of quicker with this because we spent so much time at Johnny K Picks. All right. Next we have another wrestler versus wrestler. This one's a little bit more interesting. Andrew Petrowski, the American wrestler, coming out of Henzo Gracie, Philly. Um, phenomenal wrestling. His 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 uh, hole in his game is he's a mouth breather cardio after after round two. He's he's looks like he's super tired. However, he's getting wins in the third round. So it might just be a look thing. However, Jacob Malcoon, the full three rounds, he's all he's you don't see him fade at all. However, now you got to figure who's the better wrestler. Jacob Malcoon is Robert Whitaker's wrestling coach. He's he's got some wrestling. He's got some BJJ. Andre Petrowski, Henzo Gracie, Philly. That's all they do. They don't teach you how to strike. They don't teach you how to punch. They teach you about grappling and jujitsu. Henzo Gracie, Philly is known. Pat Sabatini, Sean Brady. Who else is out of there? That they're all jujitsu guys. And wrestlers, and this one is not wrestler versus striker. Where lately, with the judges, you want to go with the striker. This is wrestler versus wrestler. Now, who you got to think who's the better wrestler, Australian Jacob Malkoon or American Andre Petrowski out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? The, I think Petrowski got better wrestling, however, Malkoon's got better cardio, and that's what's going to play a big factor here. And that's why he's the favorite because people have seen Petrowski fade and Malkoon. Coon, you nobody's seen him fade, and he just handled who is it that he punched in the back of the head? Cody Brundage, Brundage, who was also a wrestler, and he just handled Cody Brundage, embarrassed, embarrassed him. If it wasn't for that stupid punch in the back of the head, he should have. Yeah, I lost. I'm salty. I had money on Malcoon on that, but this one, I'm gonna take the dog at plus 200. I'm taking Andre Petrowski. I think he's gonna last. He's he's but I think he's been working on the cardio. I think it's going to last, and he's going to have the – it's going to be a boring kind of wrestling who's going to have the, you know, more – I don't know. It's tough, man. It's tough. But I'm leaning Petrowski, oh. dogger pass, on, dogger pass for me, plus money. I'm taking Petrowski. What do you think? Real fight picks, Dave? Doesn't matter. One of you guys. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, – just real quick because uh, – my OCD won't allow me. Uh, I do, I'm going to stick with Laughlin topology, but I noticed that uh, that Pacheco prop for a decision was plus 650 range. Wow. If you can do that, I would, I, you know, <coughs> I just want to put that out there. That That's probably what I would play if I were to bet to this fight, Andre Petrowski uh, and Jacob Malkoon. You know, um, I, I like Makun. I love his style. I love how he's like forward pressure, forward pressure, forward pressure, like a Khabib style. I love that. I feel like he's going to – you can't just do that, though, or else every fighter would do that, or else Khabib would do that. But once you kind of get to a level 
And I feel like he's going to kind of get exposed this fight by Petrovsky because I think what you're saying, like, all right, who is the best, who is the better wrestler? We just got to go by where, where it was born or where reputably better wrestlers are, and that's the United States in comparison to Australia. Jacob Malkoon is the wrestling coach for whatever school it is that he, he teaches. Robert he's Whitaker. A, yeah, he's Robert Whitaker's wrestling coach. Well, Robert but, Whitaker's a striker. You never see him wrestling. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, like I said in the chat, that that Malkoon, <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna get he's gonna be too over aggressive, and he's gonna end up in some kind of Darce choke, some kind of guillotine choke, some kind of rear naked choke. Um, I know that you know, uh, Dave is uh, Dave is there's no saving Dave right now. I'm trying to throw him a lifeline, Ranch, and there's no saving BC Dave right now. So. I'm going to go with Andre Petrovsky. Oh, all right. Dave, please, please, please. I hope we convinced you to come over to our side. Go with your gut, Dave. T-shirt bet. Hoodie bet. All in. You think Petrovsky's got better oh, wrestling than Malkoon is a fucking joke. They, like... <laughs> Take your fucking George Washington American brouhaha out of your ass and fucking oh, look at reality the way it is. Malkoon is a way better wrestler than Petrovsky no, all day long on all counts. You have stats? That Let's you're go. the stat guy. Show me. <laughs> okay. Um, Take down average. 7.20 versus 4.48. 7.20 versus 4.48. Okay. Embarrassing. Hey, listen. On the feet, 3.89 versus 3.61. Advantage, Jacob. Uh, Psych absorbs, 3.03 versus 2.49. Uh, advantage, Jacob, all day long. Takedown average, all day long. Granted, I'll give you the submission for Andre because Andre has fought the weaker fighter of opponents. Um Take down defense zero because he doesn't get fucking taken down. Take down accuracy 44 and 54. Jacob Malkoon is going to take this fight wherever he wants it to be. If it's going to be on the feet, he's going to piece this guy up on the feet. If it's going to be on the ground, he's going to take this guy down and dominate him, ground and pound him. He is so bitter about his last disqualification for back in the head punches, which we have all seen way worse than what happened last fight. That was embarrassing for the UFC, embarrassing for the state commission. Um, I'm sorry, J.Q. Malkoon was owning that guy all day long. And you think that Cody Brundage is a better wrestler than Andrew Petrovsky? Yeah, I would say so. I think no, Cody's not. a better fucking fighter. No, he's not. Andrew Petrovsky is not going to have a chance on this motherfucker. Oh, my goodness. Um, I just don't see it. Malkoon all day long. T-shirt bet. Hoodie bet. Whatever you want to do. I'm in. I'm in, Dave. You know what? Let's do it. Um, I will T-shirt bet there you. you and, uh, you know, I'll even cover the tax that it's going to cost you to ship that to the 209 from British Columbia. So, All right. You're Let's on. Do it. You're on. Write it down. Sweet. Sweet. <clears throat> Let me get the All right. see what the tariff is. <laughs> Have we looked at their face-offs? Can we see them? Yes, we can. Let's see how much more of, of a this is what we do. This is what we got over Malcoon. Watch, watch, watch the face-offs, Dave. It's gonna it's gonna look like an athlete versus a a PBA a bowler, professional bowling association. <laughs> That's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna really? look like a, a wrestler. Look at him. He looks good. I'm not gonna strip on my bob, eh? He looks good. He looks good. He looks all right. He Those looks like he's in a weight class too big. Uh, he too, looks better. He needs to come bring down a casual. Weight bring a casual and tell him, ask him, who looks better? There we go. Oh, That's what I'm talking about. Solid. Except for that stupid shit Damn. on his head. What the hell is going on with the haircut? <laughs> Okay, the so you know what? Is ridiculous, though. You got guys who try and look pretty, and you try and do the fucking shit on their get the proper tattoos. Then you got the real badass motherfuckers who are just nothing yeah. and just 
Look at the side he differential. Looks like the, he looks like the porter at the at the hotel that that Petrovsky stayed in. Like, Can I take your bags for you, sir? Get out of here. Who's thicker yeah. here? Who has a weight advantage? Come on. Yeah, yeah this guy's cut. cut. You can this see guy's who's got weight. abs. Who's got abs? Who doesn't? Who's got a, a defined bicep and who's got a, a dad arm? Who's got his hands in his pants pocket? Who's got put who's got the who's picking his pocket? Who's got the hands in the pockets? Come on. What what's with that? With Malcolm? Was he looking for his keys? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Yes, man. <laughs> Dave oh, Spitt. There is. <laughs> what is uh they both made weight 185 but uh yeah i bet you the body fat percentage definitely petrovsky's leaner definitely 37 percent malcoon yeah malcoon's hands in the pocket that's sus that's what i'm saying too fade that really you yeah. know he looks like he knows he's gonna lose he looks defeated that's what that looks like he does he does. Okay, he so I've already. got one t-shirt bet with uh, real news. Who else wants a t-shirt bet? Because I need a new wardrobe. Moving on. Let's move on. Come on. So we've already. That's a good. It's a good fight, though. I will give you that. It's good. It's going to be close. But Petrovsky with for the win. Okay. Next, we move it. Moving on. We have. Melissa Gatto and Victoria Dudikova. Oh, I hate this fight because you guys know I picked Victoria Dudikova as my unranked contender pick for females. But Melissa Gatto is the better fighter here, which irks me. So um, this is and this is why Melissa Gatto, if it goes to the ground, she's definitely she's levels above Dudikova. Dudikova has wrestling, but she doesn't have jujitsu she doesn't she's a sambo girl she they don't she doesn't have the submissions gato is a black a brown belt i heard i learned on johnny k's show she's a brown belt i thought she was a black belt that's what i heard but i guess she's a brown belt and uh we're gonna we might have to peek at their instagrams dave you're already on it look at you already sure. knowledgeable melissa gato both both beautiful girls i don't know the fat ass theory on this one but uh all right, let's see. Melissa Gatto, beautiful smile, nice teeth. She actually looks like my sister-in-law. That's kind of really? weird. She does. Hmm. I have a sister-in-law. My brother's wife looks like Melissa Gatto in the face, not the body. I would face. So bang your brother's wife. Me too. Yeah. Well, I that would be he's family. That's kind of I can't do that. I got you. <laughs> But yeah, she's an attractive girl. But so if you like blondes, Dudikova is also attractive. All right, oh, let's uh, see some. There you go. I got no pick training picks, pictures. though. Dude, what? we've got like. Oh, this is the one. She's at the all girl gym. She's at an all female facility, all girls, except for yes. two, two male coaches, and the rest are all girls. Man, I want to coach there, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, got the sweatsuit. Now, due to COVID, yeah. though, who knows where she – Tapology doesn't even have a place for where she's training. Who knows? That's what's it's questionable. So let's uh, check right out. Carlson Gracie. Yeah. I don't know. Is that her place? She might, she might have switched or something. I don't know. Yeah, th this guy's just – Given instruction. Look at that. This is like one oh. This is a white belt one oh one. Get out of here. All right. Let's see. Uh, do the cova. Oh shit. Here with the black eye. Now that really looks like my sister. My sister in law. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> just jokes. Just just jokes. Oh, oh, that's your family, motherfucker. It's just Dude. funny. It's just jokes. Just jokes. But it's fucking hilarious, though. <laughs> what do you sell a girl with a black eye? Nothing. She's already been told once. <laughs> <laughs> Get back at me. Oh, and 
This is why we get demonetized. Right. Oh, I'm talking like Cedricus Dumas. <laughs> I'm talking like I'm him. I'm just kidding. Let's move on. Let's see Dudikova's training. Oh, look at where they're axe with the axe picture. Oh, she's at MMA Masters. That's awesome. We'll go back one one picture over. Axe killer. Can you click the pictures? They have does she have tagged people at MMA Masters? Click it. Who's that? Claudia Gabriela TKO and Claudia Zed MMA. Okay, no, but no, they're not UFC fighters. The fuck is this? It's the fucking ocean. Well, what do you? She's you know she's she's just new to the state. She's from Russia. It's first taste of freedom and birthday cake. <laughs> they don't even celebrate birthdays in Russia. You know that. It's a thing. It's an American thing. Okay, the weighted ball and it, it's pulling up the plate too. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know because Gato is technically better, but due to COVID, might she's undefeated. You can't. There's nothing you can say negative about her except for she's. Uh, I think she's a fish on the ground. Oh, okay. Let's see the let's see the fat ass theory come into play. Looking good, Gato. Ooh, oh, El Gato was a cat. The chick is jacked. Kind of a, she looks good. A SpongeBob SquarePants flat ass. It's all right. She looks really good though. Dudakova. This one, they might be gearing her to be the next. Ooh, look at those buns, huh? Oh man, she looks she looks fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. She does. Wow. wow. Look at the wow. She looks clean. Wow. Between the hard nipples and the jack the, um, and and she's plus, I think and like plus two hundred as well. Screenshot that. Wow. Twenty five years old, same height. Gatto's got two inches of reach. Very nice. Let's see him yeah. face to face. Girl looks ready. She does. Gatto see, like Gatto a, does look a little bit. She's standing more erect. A little bit of a height. Looks like she has a little bit of a reach. Um. Our nipples goes to your choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm going with the underdog again. Unbelievable. Man. Too old it's for Pat good. Barry. All right. Uh, so which way are you gonna we gonna go? I don't really care this one. I'm, I'm taking Duda Kova as I, my early pick before the shows. I picked her because she's my unranked contender pick. But Melissa Gatto is she's female fight. Flip a coin. What are you guys thinking? No, you know I really like Gatto. I'm actually like I thought like I think for a little bit I was the only one who knew about her because like I really wanted her. I I I didn't care when I was doing my research for Victoria Leonardo. That's when Melissa Gatto was her debutante fight. And I noticed that Victoria Leonardo was from, uh, what's his name? Uh, she trains with Andrea Lee, and their coach um, was kind of weird. And I didn't look, I was like, dude, I want, I want that oh, girl to get knocked The bug eye guy? The bug, Andrea Lee's boyfriend there? No, well, I don't think he's the coach. Uh, it's another guy, and he competed. Oh, basically, right. like, he wears a cowboy hat, and he's yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about from Instagrams and shit. Andrew so he, Lee's coach, yeah. In he's like he's like openly racist, and I noticed yeah. that from doing research because I looked on the Yelp. I looked on Yelp at the gym reviews, <laughs> and it's not what Tony Kelly is that the Andrew Lee's boyfriend? I'm sure it was Andrew Lee, like trained with Victoria Leonardo at this gym in Louisiana. Uh huh. 
It's in Louisiana. And like, yeah. he's like, uh, he's there anymore, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, he's uh yeah. So anyhow, I, I, I became a Melissa, Leg Melissa Gatto fan because she finished Victoria Leonardo that fight and she impressed me. And then when I did the tape study, the thing about Gatto, what's nervous, nerve wracking is she's always, <laughs> she's always losing her fights until she's winning her fights. Like she, she's comfortable with going on her back. She doesn't give a shit. She'll pull guard like it's a jujitsu tournament. And that's kind of like, kind of a little bit worrisome. So it's hard to put money on her for that reason. She's not like a forward pressure, I'm going to kill you fighter. She's really tactical. She's got a lot of talent. Um, I, I don't want to see her pull guard. <laughs> and, uh, oh, okay. Well, my bad. My fault, Crystal. You're <laughs> Crystal actually is right. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Melissa Gatto. Uh, Victoria Dudikova looked good against Jinu Frey, except Melissa Gatto is better than Jinu Frey, in my opinion. And she she's got the jujitsu for sure, but I'm not so confident. I'm not so confident. I pick, I'm going to pick her easily. Uh, shout out to everybody who feels confident in Melissa Gatto. Uh, you know, you're probably going to cash that ticket, but I do have Gatto for sure, all the way. She 100%. is a confident pick for a lot of cappers, too. Dave? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to bring stats into this fucking conversation. Good, because we don't have time for that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say for a minute, three point one four versus three point nine eight versus two point four five versus three point one three. Victoria's got a decent advantage here. Take down average two point four five versus one point one eight. Advantage Victoria here. Take down defense fifty sixty three. Take down accuracy for Gatto is a twenty one percent. Wah. Um, ground game to Victoria. Stand up game. Oh. This is a wash, pretty much, guys. This is a pretty much a fucking wash. Um, accuracy, 52-48. Defense, 50-54. I'm going to pick Victoria on the ground and on, and on the fucking... Yeah, on the ground and on the feet. I got this girl all day long. Look at her in the... I'm not even mad at that. I can't be mad at that. That's a, She's the better wrestler, probably. She's a better wrestler. She's probably better on the feet as well. She's undefeated. Yeah, wrestler. But yeah, she's coming off a win because she knows she was given a win in her last fight, and she needs to justify the last win. Rose was going to have a weight class, short notice. I don't care what you want to say. I get it. She's going to justify her last win. Um, I'm going on the pretty Russian blonde girl with the perky nipples all day long. Love it. Me too. Keep your bet, whatever you want. Please. Moving on. Next, we have Ibu Ibo Aslan taking on the Pleasure Man Anton Turkali. This one is a rematch, actually. Ibu's got one loss, and guess who it's to? Anton Turkali. But uh, I'll explain that fight. Uh, Ibu was trashing him, thrashing, going round one. And right, I think the, the loss was happened in round two, maybe. Uh, but he was destroying Turkali, but then he gassed himself out. And that's where Turkali caught him with the, I think, a rear naked choke, right? Hang on a second. I got to do with our I fucking. Let's check the round. And it was round two. Two minutes in round two, got the rear naked choke. Super smash. Super Dirty smash. Reg won last week. Hang on a second. Did, I'm busy. Did Dirty Reg win last week? Hang on a second. All right. Anyway. I got to um, do with these guys. Jesus Christ. Hang on. I will fucking see in a second. You are so high maintenance. What are you in a rush for? What are you doing tonight? He's going to watch All right. Else. Whatever. All right. <laughs> I just still haven't seen him. Last win, Drew Dober's chin. Drew, who the fuck is this guy? Oh, who the fuck is this guy? Out. That's a new guy. Wins on his first week. Well done. Comment in the goddamn chat. You might get a t-shirt. Drew right. Dober's he's <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, Fleming out in chats started. or something on other channels. What a good old sh shout out to him. 
That was a tough card, too. That was fucking brutal. Brutal for a lot of cappers, too. Okay. Uh, anyway, the Turkish fighter, Aslan, has one loss to Turkali, but like I said, he was winning the first round and a half until Turkali caught him on the neck because he gassed himself out. And with that muscle mass in his tapology picture, it's kind of expected that his gas tank will drain because bigger muscles means bigger need more oxygen to gas out faster than a guy that's leaner. But Turkali has not impressed since he's been in the UFC. But in his defense, he's gone against some decent competition. The pleasure man, I have the pleasure of saying, is coming off of three losses in a row. But listen, look at the people. Aside from Tyson Pedro, who's not that great, Vitor Petrino is awesome. Jalton Almeida is awesome. I know the whole thing with the stupid, with the, you know, uh, Curtis Blades, that was kind of, you know, what are you going to do? But before that, he was just a brave CF guy going against, you know, nobody really spectacular except the well, they, 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 they fought already, right? They fought each other already? And Aslan's not even spectacular. It just happens to be. Yeah, and 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 Turkali won with a rear naked choke because Aslan gassed himself out. But I think here he's uh, worked on that, and he's going to come in. And if you when we watch the faceoffs, you'll see it looks like Turkali is shook a little bit. He's kind of he, you can tell by his face he's not as cocky and arrogant as he usually is in all the other fights he's been in. And I think uh, I think he's kind of nerved up because he's already felt the power of Aslan, and Aslan's going to bring it to him. And I think he's going to win by TKO round one or two. So <clears throat> what do you, let's uh, watch that and real fight picks. You can give your spiel. I don't know, man. Like it's hard for me to pick against somebody. I know he's looked like look crap at, for three fights. Look he at him right terrible. now. Your colleague. He just doesn't look good. He looks like he doesn't want to be there. Yeah. Who walks Rude like that? Me. Right, he's already defeated. I didn't notice that till right now. I kind of wanted to see how he. No smile. He's. Yeah, he's not pumped for this fight. He's not. That's crazy. Evil Aslan smile. Turkish flag draped. I don't know, man. He could be playing possum. I guess maybe, but that shit don't work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. He knows. You will guess because he had to cut twenty pounds in a week for that fight. Ooh. You will had bitch titties at the weigh-ins, huh? Yeah, I guess uh, they 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 do have a, a legitimate beef too. Like outside of, they've had a beef the first fight, and this beef is still continued. You know what? Honestly, um, man, I uh, I need to go see that first round between the two of them. I want to see what kind of hands. I mean, can you compare this ESO guy to Tyson Pedro? Can you compare him uh, to v v Vitor? He's Petrino? been knocking everybody out round one. But I mean, what's his? You know, what's the strength of schedule? What's his strength of schedule? I'm gonna go with the, the um, UFC fighter. Oh yeah, kind of bums. They're bums, kind of. I'm gonna yeah, go they're with all the, losing records. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna go with pleasure and, boy. And Evo is the favorite. I think I might have to do. The, I don't know. It's tough. I just don't like the. I don't like the face-offs. I don't know. I agree what with do you. you? Think? Dave, what do you think? Oh, my God. Thank you. About fucking time you fucking generous fucking talk to me. Have you watched this fight between Evil and Anton? Because I've watched it three times. No, I didn't. No, I didn't see it. Oh, okay, my God. It mm. Okay. Evil owned this motherfucker first round, ground and pound, strikes everything. Anton 
got fucking his ass handed to him for the first round. Second round, for the first two minutes, got his ass handed to him. And then somehow, by the God's grace of mercy of who is who is the saint of fucking good luck and fucking God's damn fucking bullshit? Anton somehow. Hey, Patrick. Maybe. Thank Maybe. you. Praise her or he or whatever the fuck it was. But Anton somehow reversed it because Ebo had to like, catch a breath before he was beating the crap out of this motherfucker. And somehow Anton got him subbed. There is no way besides 15 seconds of Anton winning this fight that Ebo did not, was not dominating and not killing this guy. Ebo has been holding this in for the last two years. Yeah. So take the most horrible thing you've had, bottle it in for two years, two years, and prepare for this motherfucker for two years. And then all of a sudden you got this lined up on your UFC fight. Oh, my God. Anton, I feel so bad for you. It's going to be so horrible, your defeat. I think it's going to be in round one, probably round two. It's going to be a knockout. There is no way Ebo is not walking out of this with a freaking knockout killer assassin. I hope the paramedics or worse don't have to be called to this cage. All right, listen, uh, because they and Crystal – uh, Crystal was talking about how Ebo gassed out because he had a cut left. This is why we come here for conversation, for dialogue, to learn from our our fellow, our cappers, our friends. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not changing my mind because I'm, I'm wishy washy. It's because Dave came with what I wanted to know. I didn't watch that fight. I want to know how the first round went, and and I'm trusting Dave's eyes that they're good enough to know when someone's winning a fight. He says Ebo was winning Anton in the first round, so I'm gonna trust that. And and Crystal, and I'm gonna officially switch my pick. I wanted that's all I wanted to know. Now I don't have to watch it. So you save me some time. Thank you, Dave. I'm gonna go with uh Ebo. I, I would put money on it too. If that was the case, now I'm, I still may go watch it just to watch it, but I would put money on it if that was the case, because that was the question. I want to know how that first round went. Dude, it was um I cannot believe he actually survived the fight. Okay. That's how bad it was. Put me down for Evo Ranch, officially. Okay, good. All right. All right, whatever. Moving on. You ready, Dave? Can we move on? We're all picking Evo. We Thank are. You. Next, we have. Yeah, we're on. We're on Evo. We got. We got to roll. You can miss they, you you changed my mind, yeah. really. And you assured mine. I was kind of on. I was a little we weathering, but all right. No, Next evil, we have evil, this, evil uh, all day. Regional scene fight. It should be should be a regional scene fight. We have Connor Matthews taking on Dennis Pazuka. Dennis Pazuka, the great. He does have some UFC fights, but he's lost them both. But in his defense, they were. I think they're both short notice, and they're both against better fighters that could probably beat both these guys. He lost Sean Woodson and Jamal Emers, who are lengthy reach, length reach, uh, you know, point fighters, stay on the outside and volume to death. But I think I uh, didn't get knocked out by one of them. Yeah, he got knocked out by Jamal Emers. Before that, he was a contender or a CFFC guy, but he was in, I think, uh, contender series twice in his past or something like that, I think. And he, he won too, but he still didn't get the deal. He didn't get into the UFC despite his two appearances in the Contender Series. Yes. Let's see, Contender Series back in 2022. And, and oh, he lost to Melsic Bagdasari in 2020. Then the second time he won, but still didn't get the invite. Connor Matthews, I've seen Connor Matthews at Cage Titans, and I saw him fight. Jay Ellis, who was horrible, fifteen and ninety-seven record, and he got he got the win. Unfortunately, my boy Don Shanis lost in the headliner in that fight, but 
I, I did see him. And Connor Matthews, he's he's decent. He's not – I didn't see much bad about him. He's well-rounded and stuff. He's just – I don't think he's ready for the UFC scene. I think he should spend more time into – like a like a better regional scene than than Cage Titans, maybe like a LFA or something like that. But uh, nonetheless, here he is, and he's taking on Dennis Bazooka. They're both, you know, prima. They're both like not ready for the UFC. But we got this fight, and you have to take a side. I'm gonna take Connor Matthews. I think he does have a little bit better all around game. Then Bazooka, I know he got lit up by Francis Marshall in the Contender Series, which, but Fire March was it Francis Fire Marshall? He's not bad, you know. He's he 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 was hyped a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna. This is another coin flip. It's kind of like could go either way, but I'm gonna lean with the Connor Matthews from the New England Cartel. <laughs> Both these guys are local. Um, Bazooka's from uh, Longo Weidman in Long Island, so. They'll both have supporters down in Atlantic City, but I'm going to go with Connor Matthews for, I don't know. I don't know if he's going to finish or what, but he's going to be my pick on Tapology. I don't know. What are you guys thinking about this? Did you watch any of these fights, Dave? Yeah, I did. So what, what are the odds? Um, the odds are tight. I think the plus 100 and Dennis, and Dennis and minus 125. Let me see what the updated odds are. Apologies. Because things do change. Yeah. There we go. I apologize. Um, Same thing. 125 for Dennis and plus 100. So, yeah, nothing's changed for Connor. So is this Connor Matthews? I haven't seen him fight. I'm just wondering if what his ground game is like because if Mazuka's coming from Longo Weidman, good good wrestling, good ground game. He has some pretty solid strikes. I actually liked him. I was impressed uh, both times I seen him fight. Uh, I, I was a little more I was a little more impressed the first time his first fight in the UFC because he came in on short notice and he looked kind of dangerous at times. And Connor Matthews, I never even heard of this guy. I feel like this is one of those fights. You got to pick the name that you recognize. Shout out to you again, Ranch, for picking an underdog. You're a beast for that. Especially like, wait, this is your third one, right? I'm going to go with Dennis Bazookia, all that said. Yeah, it's going crazy. And on this. I like right. that sub prop. I don't know what Connor Matthews is like. I guess Aljamain Sterling's going to be his corner. Yeah, Aljamain Sterling being in his corner. And Connor Matthews or Dennis Bazooka? Whose corner is Alja going in? Dennis well, Bazooka. Well, they're both sure. from Longo Weidman. Yeah, okay. he's going to be in Dennis Bazooka's. I a little bit like that sub prop just because yeah. I know Bazooka has skills in that area. I don't know about Connor Matthews, you know? And if you've seen him fight, how good can he be, right? So give me Bazooka all the way. That's a nice <laughs> little line. I, that's a good line, honestly. I never heard of Connor Matthews. Bazooka's minus one twenty-five, and he's a good fighter. I think he's good. I think he's got got hands. So that's my pick, and I'm not changing. I don't care what day says. You might want to listen to my spiel before you fucking uh, go all in there, bitch. T-shirt bet. All right, let me go over the stats real quick, and then well, granted, listen, the gotta, spiel. would you mind just give me just give me a little bit of slack to have myself. Mm-hmm. Um, only two fights for Connor Matthews, but oh. let's be honest. Strike line per minute, 5.13 versus 5.4 for 7. Uh, good volume versus Dennis. 3.30 versus 4.93. Heavy negative striking ratio for Dennis because Bajuka, who the fuck is Bajuka? Regardless. Anyways, Connor Matthews, good volume. Uh, negative striking ratio, but almost even. Now, let's go to the ground game. Takedown average, 0 0.98 versus 3.50. I'm going to lean to Connor on the advantage on the strike on, on the uh, takedown average. Takedown accuracy, 30 versus 58. Uh, Dennis obviously has no fucking takedown game whatsoever. Takedown defense, uh, 73 versus 50. Okay, so Dennis might have a little bit of advantage on the takedown defense. 
Now, do you really want to go over the stats oh, to Dennis, who who he has been fighting? Uh, he lost to uh, Jamal Emmers. He got three strikes in. Three strikes in? That's embarrassing. He lost to uh, Sean Whitson. 42 strikes in. Sean Whitson took him down three times. He beat this uh, Keleo Romero guy. Um, was beating him on the strikes. Managed to take him down. There was a sub advantage here. Decision win. Kind of weak on this fucking guy. Before that, um, he lost to uh, Milsik, who beat him the fuck up 102 to 52. You guys are going to put money on this motherfucker? Connor McKenzie, in his last win, um, beat Jeremiah Ferraris 80 strikes to 57. Took him down seven times. Seven times. <laughs> and the only reason he lost to Francis Marshall was Who is that, though? Six times. Yair, is that Yair Rodriguez? Yair Ferraris. Come on now. No. Stop that shit. All right. I'm just saying, of this. my point is, who is that guy? You know, like. I'm sorry. Connor Matthews, easy win all day long. Dennis has nothing to fucking impress me with whatsoever. Um, yeah. Okay. Connor Matthews. I'll bet you for a Nordic brand, anything. Nordic brand. All right. But it has to be reasonable. Uh, my Arteri jacket cost me about eight hundred dollars. What do you got? <laughs> Jesus, is that the same brand? Yep, Nordic, right? No, 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 Arteri. Arteri, that's okay. Well, that's the American boys. But give me some Canadian quality. Well, for those of you who don't know, it's ski, it's ski ski material ski equipment for skiing. If you, Dave is an excellent skier, if you guys don't know. All right, you ready to move Moving on? on? Thank you. Next, we have Julio Arce, the biggest favorite on the card, taking on Herbert No Cardio Burns. Everybody knows about the whole embarrassment when Gilbert had to carry Herbert and his, his baby brother out of the cage and into the locker room because he was so wiped out, no zero cardio left. He wanted to quit on the stool. Gilbert made him go back and fight, but uh, however, if you put that f fight aside, he's he's not a bad fighter. Herbert Burns, he knocked out Nathan Train with a with a clenched knee. He's got great black belt jujitsu. It's just his cardio shit. Julio Arce will be the hometown favorite because he fights out of Tiger Shulman in New Jersey. However. Tiger Shulman is a karate school. They don't train BJJ. So Herbert Burns, if this gets to the ground, he'll win. However, Julio Arce, I think, is going to outlast him and not get submitted. But something tells me, take Herbert Burns on a submission, round one submission, scratch off, because that it's very it could happen, and it's big plus money. Julio Arce should win if he lasts through the first round because everybody knows Herbert Burns' cardio drops off and he's his he's got shit cardio. It's his flaw. This is why he's bad. Julio Arce, he's a win loss win loss guy, right? Yeah, look at his record. So he he's not he's hard to trust, especially at minus four hundred. He's there's no way you're gonna, I no way I'm gonna bet minus four hundred on Julio Arce, but uh, I will. TKO round two after Herbert's all deflated and can't can't even walk. He needs his brother to carry him. But Herbert Burns round one is a good bet for submission because he does have way better jujitsu than Julio Arce does. So that's being. Did we watch the bazooka? We haven't watched Connor Matthews. Well, we've, like, we've been skipping by. Uh, unreal. All right, whatever. So there's a, a Herbert. Looks good. Looks good, but everybody's like he. I think he's getting a lot of booze. Look at Gilbert in the back, because Julio Arce is the hometown favorite, New Jersey boy.
But, you know, he's under a lot of pressure, too, because he's such a favorite. And he missed weight. He's the only person to miss weight. How, by how much, Dave? Two pounds. Or he weighed like one, two, four, seven. He's a pound over. But I think he did that to help his takedown defense, <clears throat> to be honest with you. So, all right. Um, yeah, I'm going to bet Herbert Burns round one, but I'm my tip, pick on Tapology to win the fight is Julio Arce, probably round two TKO. What are you guys thinking on this one? I got to go Julio Arce. I'll never forget when Gilbert Burns carried him out of the cage. That was crazy. Yeah, I know. It's such a horrible look, right? Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean, Julio Arce, though, like that was the only thing I saw this week with uh, mixed martial arts. For some reason, I caught that he weighed in at 147, and then – he left, I guess. It looked like because it didn't because of the first time he weighed in, I think he had his hands up. And the second time, I think he weighed in a second time. Or if unless he was last, because I looked at that and it didn't look like he had his hands up. And I was like, oh, he missed a weight in twice. And this time he weighed in at 147.2. So in between he like gained weight. And so yeah, how does like, that even happen? Yeah, did you really go back there and try? So uh I don't know. I gotta go with Arce with the experience, I guess I shouldn't hold that against Burns. He could come out and look like a world beater, but I like where your head is at with picking Burns by sub because really that I don't see him winning a decision. But that maybe you put a little sprinkle on that too. Uh, Look at Ice Viking said it's plus fourteen hundred. That's nice. You know, ten bucks. And look, Crystal's saying he gave up because he tore his knee. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know if that's true though. Is it? Because he looked he he looked like he he was like out by exhaustion. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, he did look super tired. That was all. That's why I thought he was out. He wanted to quit on the stool, but Gilbert made him go back in. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm still taking Arce, but like I said, I'm going to bet Burns. You too. I'm also taking Arce. Dave, what are you doing? Sure, screen. Please, uh, yeah, please, I share am. Screen. please share screen. I uh, are you looking? It's shared. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, Julio Aris, striking number four point three eight versus one point six one. I am four point three eight versus one point six one. Okay, cool. Uh, strike absorbed three point one zero versus four point seven four. You're telling me Hel Herbert Burns has a minus. Three striking ratio no, no, no. per minute. Is that per minute? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, takedown average 0 0.49 versus 3.92. Okay. There it is. Herbert, you better get this motherfucker on the ground because if you're not, you got some serious issues. Now, wait a second, kids. Who the ours? Takedown defense. What does that say? 95. Yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? That really sucks on a whole yeah, against, scope. Against, yeah, against no. strikers that don't try to take them down. I'm just, I'm, don't, like Herbert Burns is that much of a good fighter. Really? You're going to back yourself on that shit? Um, Julio Harris, uh on the feet, huge advantage. On the ground, I believe he is going to be able to sub to be able to stop that takedown advantage from Herbert Burns. Um, Herbert Burns, I believe, sucks huge. Should not be in the UFC. Julio Aris, all day long. I apologize for the odds. They're not going to be there. I get it. Julio Aris, all day long. Do not bet on fucking Burns. Wow, you stupid motherfuckers. Moving on. Who, who, Dave, you're starting to alcohol's hitting you. All right. Moving on. What's next? Uh, um, My computer's lagging. Fuck. Okay. 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 Verna Jandaroba. Quick, 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 quick. Verna Jandaroba takes my. What? Lupi Godinez. Lupita Godinez. 
Luby is training at a Lobo gym now. He moved out of Canada down to Mexico with people. This is a grappler versus wrestler. Virgin Roba is a BJJ practitioner. That's her strength. Lupita's strength is wrestling, but she also can throw hands. Um, the thing is, Virgin Roba, her, her, she might be better at jujitsu, but Lupi's way better at striking because Verna can only throw that one, two. That's it. One, two, and backs off. One, two, back off. She can't throw a combo except for that one, two. And Lupita can put together a combo, mad punches. And I think she has the wrestling to defend any submission attempts. She's a, she can scramble. She's got uh, good defensive wrestling. And Virgin Robe, I don't think she's really an a offensive takedown girl. She just finds it to the to the mat and then um you know tries to work from there. But I've seen Verna get outstruck by pretty much everybody she's fought, I think. And Loopy will do the same here. It's gonna go to decision, and Loopy's gonna win it the striking battle, and that's what the refs or, or the judges are looking at nowadays. So I'm gonna take Loopy by decision. Over Verna, as long as, as long as she doesn't get trapped in a submission on the ground, should be fine. Pretty confident. But the I think the odds are kind of too far apart. But yeah. Maybe justified though. What are, what are the odds? Let me see. Plus one ninety for Verna and minus two thirty for Loopy. What are you thinking on this one? Real fight picks? I'm gonna go with Lupita Godinez. Because uh, I think you broke it down beautifully. Like, uh, Jen Roba just has that one, too. She does have better jujitsu, but I think Lupe's wrestling is pretty next level for women's fighting. And she'll be able to counter the jujitsu with wrestling. Um, I like Lupita a lot at straw weight. I feel like she could be uh, fighting for the belt one day. Sometimes she looks like that. Rarely t she doesn't. She only looked really bad once when she fought at 125. I don't remember who that was against. But she's definitely, you know, in the white right, in the right weight class. And uh, I think she's a lot. I'm always going to pick her. It doesn't matter who she's fighting against unless it's Wei Li. I'm going to pick Lupe Godi Lupita Godinez in the strawweight division. Me too. I like her. I'm a big fan. Dave? It looks like Verna is what, 36, 35? 35. That's, That's not a good look. So, uh, same here. Uh, Lupita, sorry, Lupi, 4.31 versus 2.34, a strike nine per minute, advantage there. Takedown average, 3.39 versus 2.42, advantage there. Um, Lupita on all levels. I'm going to try and cut this short because I don't want to be that guy who just Jones her, but um, Mexican Canadian over wins over Tabarishu, easy win over uh, Elias Reed, easy win uh, over Emily Ducat, easy win um, over Calvillo, easy win. I'm looking forward to see somebody give give Lubita an actual challenge. Um, I think she is the next up and comer. Uh, I think this is a lock. Uh, Werner has no idea. She can't see where this is coming from. No pun intended. Um, but yeah, honestly, all day long. Okay. Here we go. Here's the face off. She's so cute. She is cute. This is bad haircut. Well, she's got to do what she can. She's got. To, she's working what she got. Yeah, no, girl's jacked. I get it. It's better than that. Did you ever see her with a Robin Hood hat? Oh, Jesus that's bad. Christ. Look. look at those eyes. It's impressive. <laughs> look at those arms. She is impressive, though. No, no, she's a she's a huge girl, and Lupita's smaller. She is smaller, but you know, Lupita's uh, sister is a Canadian national wrestling champion. Mm -hmm. Like gold medalist. <clears throat> okay. Mexican Canadian. Except now she's all Mexican because she 
moved from Titan in Vancouver down to Lobo Gym in Mexico. She'll be back. I like Lupita a lot. I think she can be champion one day. Exactly, MD Terp. If she if she grapples, she could get submitted. That's why I was saying that. Verna does have better jujitsu, but to, when it comes to raw wrestling, Lupi's, I think, better wrestler. But the grappling, the jujitsu goes for Jandaroba. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have Bill Algio taking, or is this right? No. Nate the Train taking on Jamal Emmers. Nate the Train Landwehr, 17 and 5. Jamal Emmers, 20 and 7. This is, uh, what's the line here? Closely lined. There's a slight favorite for Jamal Emmers. And these guys both have started their careers in 2012. So they're both veterans, seen it all. I think what this comes down to is, um, and they're close in age, 35, 34. It's going to come down to, I think, will and fight IQ. Will is something Nate Landwehr always has. He is a dog. He'll always fight for your money. He never comes with the forward pressure, very aggressive. He doesn't back down from anybody, anything. He'll eat punches to land punches. And Jamal Emmers is a more technical, like on point striker. However, he's got poor fight IQ. You can tell that by his losses against uh, Pat Sabatini, where he should have not gone down to wrestle him. And then his loss to, he had a loss to Giga Chikadze too, which he should have won, but poor fight IQ got, lost him that one too. So I'm going to go with the slight underdog plus 155, it says for Nate Train. I think Nate Train's got heart. And plus, Nathan Train spent years over demolishing all the Russians over M1. So that that's a big, big props to me. Tennessee boy going to Russia, beating everybody that he comes across. I love that about Nathan Train. Jamal Emmers, during that same time, he was doing like, I don't know, some regional scenes I never even heard of, like Beast of the beast i don't know i don't even know i forget i looked at it earlier but let me see right now real quick pretty boy jamal emmer 20 and 7. during the time nathan train was in russia he was doing road to um road to m1 usa uh smash global against people that are 6 and 11. um Let's see. He had LFA, a couple fights in the LFA. They're all right. He beat Corey Sandhagen. That's good in the back, way back time, but best of the best three. I don't know. Just, I like Nate Landwehr here at Plus Money. That's my pick. I'm going to go with him. What are you guys thinking? You know, it was one. cool. I'm, I'm glad that, Dave, I'm glad you showed the stats because I was honestly going to have you go, but I seen the stats. I seen what I was looking for. And it looks like Jamal Emmers is the cleaner fighter. He doesn't get hit as much. He has a little bit more in the takedown department, according to the numbers, just by a little bit. So he has, like, the edge. Maybe that's why he's the favorite. I'm going to go with those numbers. I know that he's the favorite. And it's, you know, it's not like it doesn't take a lot of courage to pick the favorite. But I'm still going to go for perfection. I'm going to try to win the topology. I got to go with Jamal Emmers. And I think he could probably finish him because Nate – he, it looks like he puts himself in, in wars, like you said, in harm's way. And I think, uh, yeah, Emmers finished uh, Bazooka in round one. I'm going to pick Emmers by finish. I'm going to say that under happens that fight. That's my pick. Jamal Emmers by TKO. Okay. I don't hate it. What's his... Uh... Dave, what are you thinking on this? Okay. I'm going to explain to you how Jamal Emmers dominates everybody all, all the time. In his win against uh, Dennis, 14 strikes versus three. I get it. Knocked down once. It was a one, it, it was the round one TKO before that. Jack Jenkins, 59 versus 57. He should have won that one. Split decision. Takedowns were even. He should have won that one. Before that, uh, versus Askabov, 20 or 60, 62 versus 30. Takedown. That's versus Pat Sabatini. Versus Sab 
uh, versus Pat Sabatini. Ten strikes versus one. He granted sub attempt. He got subbed on the heel hook. Before that, Jamal Emmers versus Vin um, uh, uh, Cachero. 103 versus 76 with five takedowns. This guy dominates everywhere. Everywhere. I got Jamal Emmers here, guys. Easy. One, okay. two, three. All right. Convert, convert to um, Nate. Okay, I get it. Striking ratio 6.14 versus 5.48 versus 5.10 versus 3.79. I like the ratio for Jamal better. On the ground, takedown average 1.07 versus 1.96. Advances for Jamal here. Um, takedown defense 86 versus 90. So this is going to be on the feet. On the feet between Nate and Jamal. I like Emmer's here. I like the uh, Emmer's numbers. Let's see their, how they look in the face-offs. <clears throat> I'm a little disappointed, Randy. I figured this one would be you know, a nice parlay piece right here. I mean, but I get it. I like how Landwehr's interviews. I like his post-fight interviews. I like his personality, how he talks. He's more like the entertainer. He's likable. And that might weigh in with the judges. If it's a close fight, they might want to hear him talk. Everybody thinks that Jamal Emmers is way taller. He doesn't look it. No. I don't know what tapology says, but. No, just Nate sucks. <clears throat> he does He's... not suck, Dave. Yeah, he does. Yeah, tell that to the Russians over at M1 they plowed through. Nate's a little messy. He's a little He's a little messy, he but he's good. He's a dog. All right. Moving on. Next, we have Chidi Chidi Bang Bang and Jaquani taking on Reese Skeletor McKee. Chidi Bang Bang coming off three losses in a row. Double, he's at double digit losses with a record of 22 and 10. Reese McKee. Irish fella is coming off one loss to Angelusa by unanimous decision, which I hate that loss, but um, he's 13 and five, not double digit losses. And he's coming with a age advantage being 28 where Chidi and Jaquani is 35. And I think that's going to play a part here because I've seen Chidi and Jaquani cardio fade out in the later after like past uh middle of round two he starts fading out you can see you can see it in his fighting too he slows down his punches are softer they're, they're like pillow punches reese mckee i think his cardio holds up throughout the fights even in his losses with angelusa he he took a lot of beating there he, I, he lost by unanimous decision but still he took a beating and stayed he you know stayed with him same with Alex Morono. Alex Morono beat him every round, but he never he never gave up. He never quit. He never gassed, which is, I think, is going to be the uh, deciding factor here. When Chidi and Jaquani is not going to be able to finish him, Reese McKee, when it comes to the end, will still have gas in the tank where Chidi's going to be gassed out. And third round, the, the uh, refs, the judges, I mean, the judges are going to see Reese McKee going to have a dominant third round and they they're so biased recently with you can win rounds one and two but if you but if you lose round three you lose the fight you saw that with what's his, with uh what's the last robbery the other week um you know josh, Cooley, josh Cooley Bow or no no not josh Cooley bows the other the wrestler had the all the takedowns and the Control time in round two, but the judge is still I forget his oh, name. Isaac Dalgarian? Yes, Isaac Dalgarian. They're they're you. playing third round recency. That's what and that's what I think is gonna happen here. Reese McKee's gonna win a decision. But he he will he's gonna win it just it's gonna be justified though. It's gonna that be was a Christian win. Hernandez, right? Christian Hernandez or oh, Rodriguez. Wait, Christian Rodriguez. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And Isaac Dalgarian, yes. C Rod. And there we go. Yep. So I don't know. What are you thinking about this real fight picks? 
I'm thinking I'm gonna go with Chitty. I'm, dude, again, I'm like I'm a I'm a big fat like pussy because I'm picking a lot of these favorites. I liked Reese McKee. I picked him to win against Ange Lusa, and I was watching that fight close. A lot of these fighters fought on that France card uh, because I remember watching these guys in the casino. Uh, I actually got to play on this one, and uh, I think the France card every favorite won on that card. Yeah, well, uh, so. he 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 started coming on though at the end. Reese McKee did in the third round, like you're saying, and I totally get why you're saying he could win this in the later rounds. But I was just so unimpressed because I really had more. F I really thought I had the better fighter picked on that pick against Anglusa, and it's like now he has to kind of prove himself to me again because I really thought he was going to beat Anglusa, and he did lose that fight. He did lose oh, yeah, that. He, he definitely did. So I'm going to go not with Reese McKee, Chitty, and Jack Wu. Uh, hopefully, he you know, he gets picks up a win. I, you know, it's weird to see that he's lost four times in a row because I just – I marked him in my mind as a dangerous fighter, Chitty. Maybe because mm -hmm. he came in and knocked somebody out his first fight or something. But – um I don't like how Reese looked. I was I, I had higher hopes uh, for how he he would look, and so for that reason, I'm gonna take Chidi. But man, what a good spot to pick a dog against somebody who's lost four fights in a row, who's pretty decent. He's gonna be the bigger, taller guy. So I don't blame you there again, Ranch. You pick what this is your fourth, fifth dog. So you probably I know I got a bunch of them on here. I'm it's making me a little nervous, but no, but really, because they, they go my way though. Jeez, yes, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, he I looks think, good on his Instagram. Give him that. I think Dave. I, I already know who Dave's gonna pick. Me too. I know. Really? Go ahead, Dave. Really? Why am I so judged? What? Chidi Anjikani, Reese McKee. I know who's got. I know. I'll write it down. Actually, I'm gonna write it down. What do you think, Dave? Well, okay, so. Chidi has no takedown whatsoever. Like, right? Like, none whatsoever. So we got a basis on the stand-up. So if we're going to go on the stand-up, um, I think Rice got an advantage on this one. Like, McKee's got to have the advantage on the stand-up. I mean, if you look at the stats, strike night per minute, 4.04 versus 6.06. .06. Granted, the strike absorbed or not pretty. But look at Rice McGee's. Competitors. Rice McGee has fought like three fights. He's fights against Kazmatch, Morono, and Lusa. That's not fair. That's not fair in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Believe it or not, Chidi is kind of like being handed to him as a win here because Chidi sucks compared to the opponents that he's fighting that he's fought against. Really? Matt, Morono, and Lusa? Those are the first three guys you're going to face in the UFC? Wow. wow. Chidi's such a – he's a favorite. Minus 140. No, I don't see it. Chidi's fucking doesn't even have what it takes to stand up against this guy. He can't stand up. The takedown's not there. Chidi has no takedown whatsoever. There, There is no, there is no way Chidi's going to take any way down. So it's going to be stand up. And you're going to put Rice McGee, who is a stand-up specialist, who has been faced up against Kazmat and Morono and Lusa. Kazmat, ground specialist. Morono, stand-up specialist. Lusa, combination of both. Good stand-up. Um, GD doesn't have anything regardless to what this guy has or who has fought against this guy. I'm sorry. Um, Rice McGee. I'm going with the up and comer. I'll go dog or pass here, guys. All right, wow. so not have what it takes to win this. That who Dave got wrote it down. Is that was I right? I wrote, it down. I wrote who you were gonna pick. I wrote it down. I predicted no. who you you're wrong. Oh, me all day long. McKee easy. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, he's on the underdog. This one. Chidi guesses if I start round two and wants yeah, out, Chidi also to 170 thinking he can hit. Yeah, that's another thing. I bet you that weight 
the weight cut probably is affecting him too. She's better every year, I guess, is that's the only problem. Reese sucks. He's he's O for the UFC up and cover McKee. Let's see how they size up because Chidi's always the bigger guy, but I don't think this is this is the case here. Reese is abnormally big for the division. Cheaty, cheaty, double-digit loser. I hate cheaty. I know I like him, but I mean, he's just I've lost so much money on him. See, they yeah, you're up. right. I think you're right, Ranch. He's gonna come out. And he's gonna like Cheaty's gonna hit him once and rock Reese, but Reese is Irish. He doesn't give up. He's like almost like an Irish. Mexican, he just got that dog in him. He's gonna come back and he's gonna whoop his ass in the last of the part round. He's gonna soften him up in round two and then take him out in round three. I like that, Indeed. yeah. But I, I gotta go with Chidi, Chidi though, Ranch. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Move in on next. We have oh, this one Bill Algio, Kyle Nelson. Now, that I I'm a Bill Algio fan, but I don't I don't like to fade Kyle Nelson because every time I do, he comes out. And, I, I don't fade him often. I, I took him in in Canada. And let's let's look at his, his recent. He's been on it's a little It's crazy because he looked like run. shit one week, and then the next time he looked amazing, like a world beater. Right. See, I mean, where did I – I took him um, against Blake Billard. That was the one Dave went to. And I took him against Fernando Padilla. I took those. So, I mean, but uh, I can't I can't go against Bill Algio. I think Bill Algio is better on the ground and striking uh, than Kyle Nelson. Because look at the red. Jai Herbert, Black Country Banger, Billy Q., Matt Sales, that's a bad one. Diego Fajera. I mean, uh, this is this is a tough fight to pick, but I'm sticking with my boy Bill Algio. I like uh Pennsylvania boy. He's he's uh he does like train with some of the Penn State wrestling guys. He did go to Penn State, he wasn't on the wrestling team, but he had a he was a BJJ club. He had like he was running that shit, like he was running the BJJ. It's like an extracurricular activity at Penn State, and he was running that when he went there. Let's see his. Okay, he lost to Andre Feely was his last loss. Split decision though. Uh, Hakardo Hamos that was twenty twenty one, and Hakardo Lamas, but. You know, I don't know. I, I'm going to go with Bill Algio. I like him here in this spot. Not, I'm not, not to fade um, Kyle Nelson, but Bill Algio should get this win. What are you guys thinking on this? I remember when Bill Algio had Joe Anderson Brito when they were going to fight. Uh, that win impressed me because everybody in them, everybody, all the cappers, Vegas, everybody had Jen, Joe Anderson as a the winner and uh as a lot yeah that was crazy and 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 he impressed me there and i'm not saying that's why i'm picking him but i am picking bill algio um he should have a little size advantage right against kyle nelson and we'll I, I see him like when, when they face off but i th i think so Okay, I'm going to go with Bill Algio. I like Kyle Nelson. Totally impressed me against Fernando Padilla. I thought that was going to be a one-sided fight, even though he beat Blake Builder. We didn't give credit. We're making fun of uh, of uh, Kyle Nelson because he beat Blake Builder, and we're talking about that not aging well, the win not aging well. But uh, Bill Algio, I think he has all the tools. I, I just like him better. I like his nickname. I like his nickname a lot, and no, uh, I'm cool. pulling for him. Yeah, he owns his own gym, right? So let, yeah. let, let's let's see it. Let's see him rep represent that. Yeah. Maybe he's like uh, Jeff Molina's old coach, a fighter slash coach. <laughs> Dave, let's go, Bill Algio. Bill Algio for the win. 
Um, Perfecto. Ma'am, really? Uh, I'll do it all day long. Kyle Nelson sucks. <laughs> all right, let's go with this. <laughs> That's your own countryman. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. You guys want me to do this, Kyle Nelson? All right. No, I don't want stats. I just want to see him face off. Yeah, let's no, okay, 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 let me let me go over this. Sure. All right. Um, do you enjoy majority decision? Okay, he lost that one. Whatever. Lake Builder. Lake Builder. I thought he was going to be good. I was a fan of Lake Builder. I appreciated this. I didn't realize how bad Lake Builder sucked. Um, That's your best friend. UFC 289. I actually watched this live. Um, Need the growing in the second round against Lake Builder. I get it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Nelson won that one, hands down. Against Fernando Perdillo. Fernando Perdillo, honestly, not a big fan. He kind of sucks. Uh, I think he was hand that one. Um, yeah, not a good win for Kyle Nelson, but, re but regardless, he got paid for it. Now he's actually going into a fighter who knows what the fuck he's doing. Who has a proven? Who is not a? Uh, yeah, who is not a fan favorite? Whatever I, Instagram model, Bill Ajilo is actually a good fighter, and I don't think he's going to have the. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to take advantage of him. Uh, Bill Ajilo is ranked number one at six point one one versus three point four six. Huge volume for Bill Ajilo on this one. Strike absorbed four point four one versus four point five six. Negative striking ratio for Kyle Nelson. Bill Algeo, despite a 4.41 strike to right per minute, is still on a positive ratio. On the ground, Kyle Nelson, 1.15 versus 0 0.89. But the the type of a, opponent he's been facing is not even comparable. Uh, Bill Algeo, all day long. I don't even know why this is a fight. I get it. We got this in the in the prelim still, but yeah. Argio all day long. I'm fading my boy Nelson. Now, mind you, Nelson is a tough motherfucker, so I will not, I do not think Nelson's going to be finished. So I have to go Argio by decision here, because Nelson is just a tough M.O. motherfucker. All yours. Over one and a half. Ice Viking agrees. Uh, over one and a half yeah. is a good ass. That's an fight. underrated fighter, Algio. He's so underrated. Yep. Yeah. Got a little height. Nelson's tough, though. It'll yeah, just... It's going to be a stand up fight. And you showed mm -hmm. that with the stats that Algio has the volume. And he's going to out volume Kyle Nelson. Mm -hmm. Unless Nelson can knock mm -hmm. him out. Yep. So, do you like GSP? Of course we do. Um, move. Okay, might as well just keep it right here. Next, we have Cedric Dumas, the oh, domestic abuser, criminal. <laughs> He's been he got locked up for pistol whipping his girlfriend or something. Taking on um, uh, Nur Sultan Ruzaboyev. Nur Sultan Ruzaboyev, that's a the Uzbekistan flag. Very nice. Uz Ruzaboyev comes in here with like 40 something fights, I think, right? He's got mad fights all over in Uzbekistan, though, against uh, from what I heard, they're bums. And if you look at the resume, the records show that they truly are a bunch of cans. So we're going to, I want you to open that up. But at the same thing, Cedric uh, Dumas has been fighting in Church's Chicken parking lot street fights, and he was in like game bread fights, but he was leg legitimately a street fighter. That's where his roots were. He is a thug, a gangster, and a criminal. And I think during the camp, he did have to spend some time uh, behind bars. He got locked up a little bit for his little domestic dispute. Lifelong criminal, this guy, Dumas, the Reaper. 
Um, Rosaboyev, he's on a huge win streak, though. I think he hasn't lost since 2019. I'm going to count them right here. Let's see. 33, 8, and 2. And okay, so one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. His last loss was in 2019. He's on a nine fight win streak against all these. Um, you know, look at the records, they're not horrible, but yeah, actually, they're not bums, they're not bums. Yeah, a couple of them, but uh, 13 and 4, 15 and 2, 12 and 12, is, eh, whatever. Good bums. No, they're really not. Not well, all kind of. Kind of. But Cedricus Dumas, I'm sure his his come up was not all great guys either. This guy. Okay. Yeah, his look at his nine and yeah, five, yeah. one and oh, one and oh. He's can crushing as well. Not good. Not good. So in this Can case, I mean, throw, the, throw the whole criminal thing out. That's that doesn't even play part here for me, but um, yeah, I think uh, Ruzaboyev is a much better fighter, he got much more experience. He got 40, I'm not good with math, 40, what's that, 43 fights, 43 fights to 10 for Dumas, you know. So, the writing's on the wall. He's going to get another victory here. And, and uh, UFC is trying to hype him up to the Uzbeki Ruzuboyev. So I don't know what these big odds, the wide line, what's that say? Minus 220 something? Pretty close. Hang on. Just double check this thing. We've got um, minus 225 versus plus 187. Plus 187. But, I mean, there's – Dumas could get that. He does have that lengthy strike that it, he hits with power. It's from game bread. He's from fighting in the streets, parking lot fights. So he does have that power, but Ruzaboyev's got better wrestling. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he's got better all around, I think, probably everywhere. And Dumas, if you look at his Instagram, he's like – partying, smoking cigars and crap. Ruzaboyev, I'm sure, is... I mean, I didn't check him out, but Ruzaboyev's probably hitting pads and, you know, probably posing with all sweaty post, post-training post and stuff. And he's definitely got... Look at the size. He's got a little little size advantage. I will... Dumas was... Uh, I don't know what was said there, but Dumas was pretty... Look... It was there. He was cool. It was cool. Showed respect. I got to give him that. But yeah, I'm definitely on Ruza Boyev. Confident. So Drugas Dumas is not really impressive for me. Real fight picks. What do you think? I'm going to go with Ruza Boyev as well. Um, the only thing I got is I, I saw Sadiqris Dumas. Did you guys watch that interview he did with MMA Fight Club? I did not. No, I with see Manny. It. Yeah, it was with Manny, and then uh, is that girl Haley, the girl who has a show with? Uh, he was she. It was is she got recent, the, recently. She got the interview. Yeah, it was before the whole domestic thing. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it was before his first win in the UFC. So I thought that was kind of cool. It was kind of like, was it the Asian girl? No, actually, it was the other girl, the white girl, the white girl. Yeah. Okay. And uh, and he he went pee, like while the during the interview, like didn't warn anybody, didn't say like, oh, I gotta use the restroom. He just like whipped his dick out and started pissing and just never skipped a beat. He was just like, like I would be laughing at least a little bit, you know what I mean? So I don't wow. know if he's like kind of weird, but you know, he didn't fight good his last fight. But I'm gonna go with Riza Boyev. Uh, he looks like the more promising prospect. I wish I could pick him in our unranked uh, contenders contest. Probably, probably somebody did, I think. I think maybe Dev. I mean, yeah, he, he took all those last names with the OEV. Yep. Dave was taking people who don't even fight. All right. Dave, <laughs> go ahead. What do you think about this fight? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you like Dumas? 
Dave, who'd you pick uh, last show? No, you can't pick Dumas here. A 6'5", you spec no. Fighting out of Philly, too. So he's going to have that Philly attitude. Uzbekistan fighting he's out, not of out of Philly. He's out of Philly. Yeah, oh. I remember you saying this. Yeah, Ruzaboyev is, yeah. I remember you saying that. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's a bad yeah, look, fam. It's a bad look. A, a fucking Philly guy who's got Uzbekistan in, who's got that record. Uh, Dumas doesn't have a chance in hell here, kids. Um, I think it's going to be within distance, probably first or second round, um, either by um, rear naked choke, which means fucking decapitation, or by ground to pound, which means, yeah, it's over. First or second round, there's no way this fight's going distance. Love it. Somebody did pick then somebody somebody was defending Dumas over on that last show. So I forget who, Cody or it. maybe Cody. I don't know. One of them was first and second yeah. round finish this oh, fight. Not the distance. But anyway, so we're all, all on board with the Uzbekistani guy. Which, yeah, I'm confident too. Look at, I like him. I mean, Azatar was old. Azatar, that's who Dumas fought last time. And the time before that. Uh, he fought Cody Brundage, <laughs> so yeah, Cody Brundage you know. is a ghost of what he used to be. All right, moving on. Next, we have Bruno Silva and Chris Weidman. Oh, poor Chris Weidman. You know, Chris Weidman has just not been the same since the broken leg. I and even before that, he was starting to fall off. He's he's what is he almost? He's forty. Is he forty? He's up there. But the same in the same right, Bruno Silva hasn't been looking good as of late either. They both are, are one and four in their last five, right here. But uh, thirty nine for Weidman and thirty four years old for Bruno Silva. But like I said, Chris Weidman, that broken leg. He's ever since that he's been fighting skittish. He's like not aggressive anymore. He, he's he's kind of like still nervous i think about that leg because he broke and he when he broke it that uriah hall fight uriah hall didn't even what did he check a kick i think he checked he, he like checked the kick that was it that's how chris wyvern broke it like it was just so weird fluky it's just how did that happen but um that was, that was disgusting yeah and it's all it's done now and chris weidman i think should have hung it up there he should have retired after that broken leg because he's yeah, he's a shell of what he used to be. Bruno Silva, he's kind of on his way out too. He's, he's not he's hard to trust, but I think he's sensible enough that he's going to attack that broken leg or the leg that was broken with leg kicks and find his way to a TKO probably round 1 or round 2 unfortunately for Chris Weidman the All-American. What Chris Weidman does have going for him is close to home. He's going to have the crowd support but that can only give you so much, you know, and it's not it's not going to be enough for Chris Weidman. He's going to get knocked out. It's unfortunate, but but it's true. Bruno Silva by knockout. And even the bookies know it because Bruno Silva is a minus 235 favorite to plus 195. For Chris Weidman just uh, I hate going hate go rooting against him, but facts are facts. And that's what's going to happen. What do you think? Real fight picks. I mean, you got to imagine the UFC. You know, they say they don't put fights together for somebody else to win. And I totally think that's true. But I could totally, I mean, they know what they're doing. So I feel like they're giving Chris Weidman his best chance to win by putting him against this matchup, against this matchup here. But uh, I mean, did he lose his last fight via leg injury? Wasn't he hopping around? Like, wasn't his leg getting oh, against Brad, Brad Tavares was yes. showing mercy. Brad Tavares could have knocked Chris Weidman out plenty of times, but he respects him because Brad Tavares is a he's a decent guy. So that's why he he went from part he went to pillow hands. He was like, just he was gonna he, he's you know what I'm not gonna embarrass this guy and knock his ass out, which I really could. I'm just gonna pillow hand punch fight my way to a easy unanimous decision. And that's exactly what he did. I don't know why that's funny, but. It's funny. But, yeah, it's funny. But Bruno Silva coming out of Evolucao in down in Brazil, they don't 
they they're they cut they're cutthroat. They go for the kill whenever it's available. They go for Evolução. Is that how you say Evolução Thai MMA down in Brazil? They yeah. If you see you see a, a wound, you're attacking it, and that's what he's gonna he's gonna kick the shit out of that broken leg, the leg that had the break, and he's gonna knock him out. He's not gonna be easy and show respect like Brad Tavares. He's gonna go for the jugular. Here's the other thing, though, too. Like, when you're, you know, Chris Weidman's a good wrestler, right? He's a good wrestler, okay? I'm not taking that away from him. Right. All but, like, what if his leg gets sore halfway through round one? Is he still going to be a good wrestler? I don't think so. And so, he's 39, so you got to know his his, his cardio's got to be diminished, you know? Yeah. I want to pick, I want to pick Weidman because he's pretty cool. You know, he's part of, like, he's, he, he, Longer he has, Weidman MMA. I mean, he's just part of history. Like he, he, sh- he should be in the UFC, like Hall of Fame one day, right? Just be over, the, just for those wins over uh, Anderson Silva alone, right? But look at but look at the last go fights of like Shogun, you know, Shogun too, Shogun Hua. He's another look. All these guys wash out. They're they were once fantastic, yeah. but they wash out. Yeah, I go with I got to pick mm-hmm. Silva this time, but you know yeah. he's pretty good against Silvas, so we'll see. But I got Bruno Silva. TKO, just because Weidman couldn't fight on his leg anymore, he's gonna right. he's gonna hurt it himself, or or Bruno Silva's gonna injure it. It's gonna be one or the other. His leg's not gonna not gonna make it through the fight. Dave, same. Um, I can't pick Weidman here. Let me see what we got for the face offs. Yeah, let's see if he's a win. <laughs> I'm gonna say see under, guys. Win. Under, I bet you under's minus eight hundred. Share the screen, Dave. I don't see shit. Oh shit! Hang on. It's all gravy. Uh, where am I here? I got homework to do here. Hang on. It's all good. Who am I, and what am I doing here? You guys did great, by the way, on uh, the show tonight earlier. Oh, thank you. Good job. Represented well. I the I the supporters in the chat I appreciate Crystal he was a big supporter in the chat loved it Simple Man was there a lot of these guys Ice Viking showed up thank you yeah Ice Viking a lot of support in the, in their chat over there oh hands in the pocket don't like that <laughs> it's that fucking defeated look what am I doing here look. Come on, get your coat off, Weidman. He can't, he can't, can't even take his off. jacket off. That's fucked up. He is the hometown guy, though. Fans are loving him. Let's go. Wishing the best, but there's just no future. There is just yeah. no. He wants to kick that leg right now, Silva does. He wants to kick him right in, right in the side of the leg. I would, too. I would too. That if I was fighting him, I'd, I'd attack that thing. I'd, I'd watch the Uriah Hall fight and just <laughs> go for that leg. Just go for it all day long. Calf kick, calf kick, calf kick. All right. Um, so we're all inside of Bruno Silva. Moving on. Next, we have what's next? Vincente Luque. Is he next? Yes. Yeah, Vincente Luque and Jaqueen Buckley. This one I've been back and forth, back and forth so many times, but I've settled on Vincente Luque. He's got a better um, resume, better strength of schedule in his past. He, I think he's way better when it comes to ground game. And Joaquin Buckley is like, a, he's he's strong and he's got the power, but he's he fights like a brawler where Vincente Luque is more technical He's more he like picks his punches. He's gonna he's gonna score more significant strikes. He's gonna land on his target more. But Joaquin Buckley, if he connects, he's he's the more he's a stronger, more physical presence there. But Luque should be able to edge out. It's three round fight. He should be able to edge out a decision. And if it does go to the ground, he might even get a sub because he like Vincente Luque likes that Darce choke. He likes um. You know, a lot of the front, front, uh, like, what's it? Yeah, let me let's check his uh, 
resume real quick. I know he's got multiple. Look at he's got Darsh Choke, Darsh Choke. There's a couple others I thought too. Darsh Choke. No, he, he loves the Darsh Choke. Oh, Anaconda. But man, he loves that Darsh Choke. And I think uh, he might he might be able to catch Joaquin Buckley in that Darsh Choke because Joaquin Buckley's ground game is slacking. So and I think striking, I think Luke would be able to outstrike him too. It's a um because Joaquin Buckley is a brawler. He's not a tactical boxer. He's a, he's a like brawler style. So I'm taking Vicente Luque by decision. I don't think he's going to, unless he finds that sub, but I think I was, Buckley's going to withstand it, go to decision, three rounds. Luque by decision. That's my pick. What are you thinking? Yeah, this one's really tough because I want to say, I'm just like kind of guessing, but I want to say Vicente Luque fought at lightweight. But I know for sure he's a welterweight, and because uh, and if not, he's fought a couple guys who fought at lightweight. For instance, one of those guys is Rafael dos Anjos, Michael Chiesa, and Michael, Michael Chiesa, Chiesa is welterweight, isn't he? Or middleweight or something? He's he's a bigger boy. I Tyrone think he's, Woodley, Nico Price. These guys are. Yeah, I'm looking so through right now. He's a welterweight. But Joaquin Buckley, if I remember correctly, he's fought up, even up at middleweight, which is kind of crazy. And now it seems like he's fighting in his correct weight class. So I kind of want to see how he's been doing when he's been fighting in welterweight. But uh, Joaquin Buckley might have a certain kind of athleticism advantage, even though Vicente is more technical. You know, he, he could be the faster, quicker fiber twitch muscle guy mm -hmm. uh, so you know it, it's really tough because i'm not like the biggest buckley fan i thought you made a beautiful point earlier today i remember you said that he got a lot of praise over that unbelievable knockout but he hasn't he mm -hmm. didn't live up to that like superstar moment that he had he hasn't really lived up to that and you're right, right. but i'm still gonna pick buckley because Ooh. I want to see the face off. If he looks like way massive, if he looks way massive, then I'm gonna but if if Luke sizes up to him in any way, I might change my pick to Luke. I kind of want to see the face off. But if Buckley, if he looks like the if he looks like Luke Luke's dad, if it's like a father and son face off, I'm gonna stick I with think Buckley. That size up probably probably well. I'm, I don't know. What's sure. his name look like? Like a little weenie at the way way in Vicente Luque did. He looked like a little weenie. A little weenie arms. And I didn't like how he was calling out Nate Diaz back in the day. It pissed me off. And because Nate was on the, you know, everybody knew he was on the down and and Vicente on his way out and, and, and Vicente Luque was on his way up. I didn't like that shit. I'm a Nate Diaz fan. Yeah, I, I like Nate Diaz too. But I like that. I'm looking at his Instagram right now, Vincente Luque. He's training at San or Killcliff with you know Gilbert Burns. There's uh, Gregory Rodriguez in these pictures. He's got Gregory. Yeah. Good. So Gregory would be great, great to train with because he's big. And there are real real training pictures. He doesn't have many promotion type. You know, everyone try to sell like some sort of supplement and stuff. I don't see none of that here. Let's check out Jaqueen Buckley real quick. Is Dave back yet? There, Dave. There you go. What are you thinking, Dave, on this fight? Man, I don't like Luque. I like Buckley here. Look, see, Luque is a little bit, little bit taller, I think. Yeah. yeah Buckley's but growing that fro. He's growing that mini fro, but aside from that. Yeah, but look at the pecs difference. Look at the size yeah, difference. No, that's also, also cardio sucker. The arms, like everything is leading Buckley here. I mean, so, uh, hang on a second. Let me go to stats real quick. Vincente Luque, strike time per minute, 5.17. I get it, but strike absorbed, 5.15. Like he's got an almost even striking ratio. Versus Joaquin Buckley, who's 3.87 versus 3.4, which is 
not much better, but a little bit better. Uh, as far as the ground game goes, 1.04 versus 1.5 uh, versus 1.51. Granted, a wash here. But if you look at the actual record of the guys, Joel King Buckley against Alex Moreno. Outstruck Alex Moreno, took him down twice. Impressive as fuck. Outstruck Pilajo, took him down twice. Very impressive. Chris Curtis outstruck him, got caught. I get it. He got caught, got knocked out. So be it. But we're still winning that fight. Um, even off. Got taken down twice. Granted, I don't think Luke has the takedown that Ivanov has. Before that, Durev took care of him. Alazan took care of him as well. Easy on the stats. Took him down five times. I mean, Durev took him down two times, but still could not fucking... But Joaquin Bucky knocked him down twice. I don't see Vincente Luque being that good. Like, I get it. In the last few fights, um, he beat RDA. Took him down eight times. But, I mean, this is old-time RDA. It only won by decision. Not impressive. Lost to Neil. Got knocked out. Got pieced up on the feet. 121 to 97. Pieced up huge. Lost to Bahamian, uh, Bilal, which is granted. Everyone loses to Bilal. He, he beat him. Got taken before, down too. five times. No, he no, no fame in that one, guys. Yeah, no fame in that one. Uh, Kiesa, the one fight he... The one fight he won, seven strikes versus four. That's he was going to lose too. Kesa was going to choke him out, and he did it. He missed his opportunity. Okay. He beat Woodley. Um, was losing in strikes. Got a sub. Got one sub. I get it. Woodley is not the BJJ black belt you've ever seen before. Before that, Randy Brown. Who the fuck is that guy? Um, you don't know Randy Brown? He's awesome. Patient yeah, sensation. Okay. That's right? a good win. That's like his best win. Yeah, sure. Nico Price, um, not a, not an impressive win at, as far as that goes. I'm sorry, guys. I get it. I'm just picking Joe Kim Buckley in this one. I'm okay. fading. I'm Let's fading Luke. All right. Oh, I'm with you, Dave. All right, finally, main event. Man, I'm exhausted. Let's do it. We have for the main event the girls, Aaron Blanchfield, Manon Ferro. Aaron Blanchfield, 12 and 1, Manon Ferro, 11 and 1. I'm on the hometown girl that's 10 years younger that can wrestle and strike. She doesn't strike as good as Manon Ferro, but Aaron Blanchfield. Does have that wrestling, and it's not just lay and pray, lay and cover. It's not wet blanket wrestling. She's active. She's twenty four. She when she takes you down, she works it. She'll work for submissions. She'll work for ground and pound. All that. Manafro, fantastic striker, fantastic kickboxer, top top notch. But if she gets to the ground against a good wrestler, I think that's where Blanchfield's going to find some success. And five rounds. Cardio is going to come to play. Manafro is 10 years older, 34 years old to 24. No, no, no. Last field. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know Manafro has a big size advantage. If you look at the face off, she's much taller and all that. But I think uh, Cardio is going to come to play, and Blanchfield's going to win the later rounds and find herself winning a de decision. Or she might even find a submission because she does will go for him. And for all, I don't think her submission defense is – she's French, and she's a striker. I don't think she even trains submission defense. You know what I mean? So I'm going with Aaron Blanchfield. I don't know if I'm going to pick sub or decision, but I think Blanchfield's going to have better cardio and advantage on the ground. And for all, will find it uh, tough to stay on her feet, even though – like Blanchfield's takedowns against uh, – Wrestlers aren't that great, but Manafro is not a wrestler. She's a striker. That's why I think Aaron Blanchfield is going to be able to get her, get it to the ground and find a sub or decision win by ground and pound, like more strikes landed. What are you thinking about this, guys? 
Meta Fioro, I didn't I just noticed 91% takedown defense. That could pose for a problem. Let's see who she's fought. Dave, can you pull up her tapology? Uh Nama Nunez, That's a good uh, one. Mernera, Maya, Bueno Silva, and Ricci. Okay. Against Bona Silva, that's kind of good. I mean, Bona Silva, she took Bona Silva down two times. Uh, she took Tabacharichi down one time. She took uh, Victoria Leonardo down one time. Uh, she took uh, Caitlin Samarina down one time. She took Jennifer Maya down okay, twice. Once. She has the she has a takedown advantage here on every single one of her fights. She better not take down Blanchfield. She'd be stupid. Give me Fioro. We're just looking at those numbers, looking at those names. Okay, but Blanchfield, okay, took Jessica Andrade down once and choked her out. I get it. Um, mm -hmm. Took down Molly McCann once. Kimura. Um, got taken down twice by J.J. Aldridge and still won. Uh, took Miranda Maverick down seven times, but that doesn't count. Took uh, Sarah Alpar down three times, but that doesn't count. I mean, like, her takedown advantage is, besides Molly McCann once and Jessica Andrade once, not that great. Give me Fioro, because honestly, I have her to be champion of the division. I have her to be the next champion. It sounds like Dave's going that way, too. Let's look at the face off. She is she is bigger. She's a bigger woman. Damn. She beat Rose. That was pretty good, even though Rose got her in the third round, which is a little yeah, worrisome. No, no. Okay, but that... Blanchfield is I don't think can wear down Fioro. I think that's a different kind of wearing down because Rose has power and Fioro had to be moving a little bit in a different kind of way. I don't know. I just gotta go with Fioro. I gotta go with yeah, Fioro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is it's very it's a close fight. Why it's, yeah, Rose took that fight. Are, they both have a path to victory. It was a catch weight fight. Don't count that Rose fight. That Look Rose that fight hair. was a she, she just doesn't comb it, doesn't give a crap. I love that. It'll be all braided up jacked. tomorrow. Jacked. Hell yeah. Cold-blooded. Don't get me wrong. Aaron looks good. Excellent. Hometown favorite too. She she's from Jersey. This is yeah. This is set up. They want her to win. That's like Ivan Drago though. Look at that. Yeah, First Rocky. I got Drago. All right. So you guys are both on the underdog man, Ferro. I'm taking my girl Aaron Blanchfield comfortably. Lock of the night. I can't okay. put the I can't put minus two hundred odds on Blanchfield. Hell no. Uh, plus one sixty on Ferro. No, but I can throw her in a parlay. All right, now we have to come up with our three leg parlay because I am wiped out. This is, I've been on on screen for way too long. So okay. let's see. We've we've disagreed on several fights, so this might be a chalky one. But let's see. We're all on the side of Bruno Silva to beat Chris Weidman because of his bum leg. We're all on Nursultan Ruzuboyev to beat Cedricus Dumas. We're all on Bill Algio to beat Kyle Nelson. And these guys, this is minus 235, minus 225, minus 245 so far. We don't put girls in anymore because we learned that lesson. Uh, we're split on, on Petrowski. We're split on Matthews. We're all on Julio Arce that he's too chalky. Ibu Aslan, we're all on him, minus 125. There's one. And everything else, we have disagreements. So... One, two, we're in agreement with five fights. One of them's too chalky. Well, six fights. One's too chalky. 
One's a girl's fight. So we got to choose from Ibu Aslan over Pledger Boy Turkali, Anton Turkali. Bill Algio over Cal Nelson. Ruzaboyev over Dumas. And Silva over Weidman. Silva over Weidman, lock it. I think that's a lock. Um, and the other ones you guys can choose. Well, I think we should throw in Aslan because he is uh, minus 125, and that'll help out our parlay numbers. And then the that we I have got, pick um, Aslan, uh, Bill Agio because Cal Nelson's going to lose 100%. And Chris Weidman versus Bruno Silva. Uh, Bruno, uh, Chris Weidman, no, not happening. Silva all the way. That three three leg parlay gives me a plus two sixty four. Okay, let me see. What was it? You got Aslan, Algio, and Bruno Silva. Silva. Yeah. Oh, and and bet online. Ruzo Boyev and Bruno Silva are both minus two hundred. But yeah, Bruno Silva's more confident pick, I think. Um, so those three for me come out to plus two eighty six. That's forty more dollars. Place bet done. Now I'm gonna post it. Okay, what time do these fights start tomorrow? That's a good question. Eastern I'm time. Curious. Uh, start at four o'clock PST. That's your yeah. time. So for me, it's at seven yeah. o'clock. No, like one o'clock your time. Oh, four. You said PS. That's Pacific. Yeah, PST. four o'clock Pacific, which means fucking one o'clock your time. No, I'm ahead of you. It means That's seven o'clock my time. Yeah, East Coast. We're right? What? I'm losing. I'm Time to go. You are tired. At Time 1 for PM? It starts at 1 p.m., I think, right? F 4 o'clock for you guys. He just said yeah, it. 4 o'clock. 4 p.m. Okay. All right. That's plenty of time. I got to go to the bank. I got to mm -hmm. put a couple of DraftKings lineups together. I gotta remember to do my tapology. I'm gonna do it right after the show, so I don't forget. And the next week, I looked ahead. It's, it's Brendan Allen versus Curtis Blades. No, wait, wait. I, Ooh, I mean, uh, Curtis, Chris Curtis, Chris Curtis, Brendan Allen oh, yeah? versus Chris Curtis. Is that a rematch? Sounds like it is. Before. It's another. It's a rematch. Who won last time? Brendan you know? Was it Brendan Allen? Because that's what I would assume. I think so. I I don't know. Let me check. I know that you guys are you guys are probably spent because you guys did five hours. Yeah, I'm definitely spent. Yep, it was a uh, Chris Curtis, and they and he lost to Chris Curtis in a knockout in the second round. That's crazy. Okay. Oh, so it's a rematch for yeah, good, good. It's a revenge rematch. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, Ranch. I'm glad I found my laptop, and uh, it was good to be on the show. You guys did awesome earlier. Appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you guys. Thank no you. Guys. No problem. There's our uh, three leg parlay. It's plus two eighty six. Evo Aslan, Bill Algio, Bruno Silva, lock it in. It's gonna win. And uh, yeah, we'll, next week we'll see you next week for the Bruno or Brandon Allen and Chris Curtis fight. No, All no, right, guys. Me. Good luck tomorrow. And yeah, I gotta hit the hit the hay. I'm exhausted. Wipe.